The walk was organized by Centro Cultural Hispano de San Marcos and the League of United Latin American Citizens Council. It came together at the Hayes County Historic Courthouse. The organization of this walk went over several months uh, visiting with uh, Gloria Salazar, the, the coordinator for Centro Cultural, with LULAC, which is me and, and my wife, Cynthia. The walk called attention to the Latin American influences in San Marcos and the diversity of the city's Hispanic heritage. The reason for doing all of this, apart from bringing the awareness to the Latino community, is all the proceeds from this walk are for scholarships for students. For me, it's orgullo, it's being proud of the, the culture that we have, the contributions that we've made to America, uh, being recognized. Hispanic Heritage Month will continue until October 15th. Organizers say they hope it will inspire Hispanics to value their culture. For Bobcat Update, I'm Abner Merlo. Located in San Marcos at Spring Drive, the Meno Center provides a new learning experience with its stand-up paddling tour. The tour begins with a 30-minute introduction that covers the area's unique history, followed by an hour-long paddling excursion. You should sign up for stand-up paddleboard tours because it's you can't stand up paddleboard like this in the San Marcos River. It's kind of a one kind once in a lifetime kind of experience to be out here on Spring Lake. The water is 72 degrees year round, so being that close to the water is actually pretty cool. There's no current, so you get to kind of explore, kind of choose your own path with your guide. If paddle boats aren't for you, the Meadow Center still offers its glass bottom boat tours, which have been popular for decades. And thanks to sponsors, both excursions are free of charge for veterans, active military, and their families on November 9th. We have a, a long-standing, fantastic relationship with uh, HEB. Uh, they have partnered and been great collaborators with us on so many wonderful projects. And uh, we really wanted to honor the veterans, and we wanted to, to get veterans and their families uh, out on the lake. And we feel like it's the least that we can do for our veteran community uh, in their service and to honor them. And we also have student veterans, so we have veterans here on campus, I just feel like it's a it's a wonderful way to engage um, some some really remarkable people in our community and bring them out to the lake for education and and leisure and, and being connected to this this wonderful place. The center's website provides information on how you can book tours at the lake. For Bob Kite Update, I'm Abner Marillo. Texas State's Soapbox Derby was held at Ingram Hall. More than a dozen participants competed. Wooden soapboxes are no longer used for the races. The vehicles have been upgraded for speed and safety. Hi, my name is Kendria Knox. Today I competed in the Soapbox Derby, one of Texas State's longest uh, standing traditions, and I'm part of the Bobcat Connection team, so we're all about prize and traditions. It was an amazing time, I had great fun. I had got second place to McCoy, so yeah, it was a great time. The cars are launched at the top of a hill and are stopped by either gravity, brakes, or hay bales. Uh, my name's Adam Holden. I was representing the McCoy Ambassadors. We're a group of students in the School of Business, and we get to represent the School of Business at different events such as like Bobcat Day or whenever they have major events inside McCoy and they need a student's perspective. Soapbox Derby is Texas State's longest standing tradition. Uh, it's a great time, a great event. You can build your own cart or you can rent a cart from SACA. And honestly, if you rent a cart, you're able to paint it so it still gives you that feel of like, it's your Oryx custom cart. I recommend it for everybody to get involved at least once. Uh, it's a blast when you go down the hill and you see everybody on the side cheering and yet chanting. And then uh, winning the Soapbox Derby feels really good because last year we participated too. And we came a little short, we got second, but this year we took home the dub and it was awesome just to see how excited everybody was. So it was a great experience. Texas State has been holding the Derby annually since 1967, making it one of the university's longest standing traditions. For Bobcat Update, I'm Abner Murillo. Depending on the store, each one will have different sales. Employees in stores like Reebok and Nike have been stocking up to prepare for the special day, the Friday after the Thanksgiving holiday. So recently we've been preparing by organizing shipment. We've been getting a lot in. Our demand is really high, especially with the holiday season. We have been working on organizing our team, getting them together, 
making sure they're prepared. We're planning group meetings just to make sure we're on top of everything. As far as I know, all of our store is gonna be 50% off everything. I believe our clearance rack is gonna stay the same. We still will have our door busters going on. Um, but other than that, it should be a promotion that's lasting a week long. Each business has a schedule to get their staff ready for customers. Retail teams, the sales floor, and inventory have to be prepared for what could be a chaotic time. So for this Black Friday, we're looking to make around a million dollars just in this one week. So uh, we have a pretty big store here, and a lot of people are going to come in looking for the deals like early on in the week. So it's very important for us and like how we're preparing for Friday and Saturday because we're closed on Thursday is making sure the floor is filled at all times. So taking product from the back, putting it on the floor. We take in about four trucks a week right now. So I think this morning we had like 700 units um, and it's all about getting, getting everything organized in the back of house so that we can bring it out to the floor as stuff is bought. That way when Friday comes around, the floor is completely filled for, for people to shop around and get whatever they need. For those unable to make it to this year's Black Friday sales, keep an eye out for Cyber Monday the following week. For Bobcat Update, I'm Abner Merlo. Milk crates, one on top of another, how high can you go? It provided a fun and wobbly activity. This is my first time. I actually heard of it uh, before because all my friends would come and do it. Uh, my friend Miriam actually invited me out and she definitely was the one egging me on to give it a shot. So finally gave in, gave it a shot and it was a lot of fun. I think um, I would definitely try it again if I had the opportunity. The trick to it is that you have to like start climbing um, on the corner and I didn't really know that until the very end. Participants stacked the crates as high as they could before the whole effort toppled and crashed. It's kind of intense, so it's nice to have like other people there kind of like cheering you on. They're like, oh, you know, like go one more, go one more. Or just like the person that's like handing you the crate. It's like really nice because it's like they're very calm and you're like, I'm trying not to fall. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty unique experience. The next uh, one that we have would be December 2nd from 7 to 9. The rec center's website provides information on how to participate in the next crate stacking event. For Bobcat Update, I'm Abner Merlo.